The core question is whether nitrogen fixing trees store more carbon in the ground than non nitrogen fixing trees, or vice versa. Is there any difference here at all? Just looking at the numbers, it's hard to tell that there might be any difference. One of the first things many uh, statisticians are likely to do, and I'm going to try, I'm going to copy the data and come over to my box plot R tool that we used way back in chapter 2. Go to data upload, go to paste data, tell it the data is tab separated, try to paste that in. And you'll see I have an error. Uh, the number of items replaced is not a multiple of the replacement length. So let me see if I can do that again. And it didn't work. Now I, I have a pretty good idea of what's happening and this is a technical issue that you probably wouldn't realize is going on. My problem is this these up here are confusing the uh, the system and so that means I'm going to have to do a little bit something different up here. I got the non-nitrogen and nitrogen. Uh, it's that quotes are a problem. Non tab that's not going to work. So I'm going to uh, clear that, run back here, I'm going to grab this data, I, I'm pretty sure I know what my problem is here, throw it over here, I'm going to have non-nitrogen, my problem is I'm using some unusual characters in that header, this happens, but this is part of learning, nitrogen fixing, okay, Do and let me see if that works better, copy, come back here, paste and now it works you one of the key skills you're going to have to have in this day and age is troubleshooting when things don't go right what went wrong some of these special characters that I was using up here in the top of the in row one were there's the Delta the little squared these are special symbols and also, I had spaces in between them that can throw stuff off. So there's my data. Now I go to my data visualization. There's the box plots. I'm seeing a lot of overlap in the box plots. There is a difference in the medians, and that's potentially significant. But we haven't learned to do a statistical test for a difference of two medians. So this is a good chart, but it doesn't show me that there is a significant difference. It shows me... It does show me that the nitrogen fixing trees all look like they may be storing more carbon than the non nitrogen fixing trees. There's a difference. But maybe that difference isn't enough to amount to statistical significance. But that now clues me in on the very next place to go. I'm going to grab these two guys because they're simpler, toss them over here. The very next thing I'm going to check is okay, what about the average, the mean? The mean for this data. 13. On average, in non nitrogen fixing trees are storing 13 kilograms, right there, kilograms per square meter per year. The nitrogen fixing trees are storing 78. They're storing more. Uh, that's actually going to make a useful chart, I suspect, if I grab it. Uh, now, the chart is messed up. That's not the chart I want. It's only got one column. Don't worry. Come over to Setup. Scroll on. Now, here I'm working on the laptop. On, on the app, on the mobile app, you're going to have to probably add in something in column F to artificially do this. But in this one, I'll just tell it, G isn't a label. Boom. Problem fixed. I now have non-nitrogen and nitrogen fixing. Again, in an earlier video, uh, I ran into a problem on the app where I couldn't get it to split the columns like you just saw. And I was able to split it by adding an artificial column here and putting down here the word mean and over here putting the word statistics and that did work when I then selected this and made a graph uh, that worked on the app. In this case you can see it hasn't worked at all uh, because it doesn't know what to do with that first column. It turned it into a line chart so but I can fix it and here you can see it is working uh, as I expected it. There's now two charts here I try not to get confused. But that's a fine chart. That's a good start. It suggests there's a difference, but I don't yet know 
that that difference is significant between the two columns. I've got two samples. I have no, uh, I have no uh, population. 20 trees in one place, 20 in another. There are more of these trees on the planet. I can't treat this as all of the data that exists out there. How do I compare two sample means with no population mean? We're into chapter 11. But these aren't paired. This is a tree in Kamer over on one side of the island. This is a tree in Palakur, the other side of the island. These aren't paired. They're just two different trees. Two different. The order doesn't matter here. The order doesn't matter at all. So this is independent samples. So all I can get is a p-value for independent samples. That's going to be a t-test of the first data. Whoops. Here we go. That data there. Comma, now this data here, I want two tails. And I'm going to go for type 3 because I believe, I should check, but I believe that the control cut, let me drop this down low, paste. Let's just check the standard deviation. Go over here, grab me this data. I'm lazy. Select, copy, escape, equals equals the S T D E V control V paste boom that one has a standard deviation of 87 uh, whoops control Z I went the wrong way go over this has a standard so the standard deviations are not equal so I couldn't use a type 2 test in the back right in the back here the back of this guy I cannot use a type 2 because the standard deviations are not equal a type 3 test is the one you use when the standard deviations are not equal. I should have checked that first, but you know what? Even if the standard deviations are equal, you can still use a type 3 test. Yes, type 3 will work. The only time you can't use a type 3 is when you have paired data, before and after, or some kind of paired data, uh, and then you have to use a type 1. So we only use type 1 and 3 in practice. MIP value shocking <laughs> okay not shocking it's surprising why because in this class and in the study too our alpha our risk of a type 1 error is 5% we're accepting a 5% risk of a type 1 error a false positive of detecting a difference when there is no difference the word false positive is very very important to know it means you've detected a difference when there isn't one False positive is a word you'll hear a lot these days. There are cases of people testing for coronavirus that come out as a false positive. And so these these uh, people, that's why you often have to get, if you get one positive test, they always go back and test you again because the odds are very low that you'll get two false positive tests. But you will always get some false positive tests. There's no way around it. And it has everything to do with alpha. All tests have their alphas. Uh, all tests have their risk of a type 1 false positive. It's just the nature of uh, statistics and science and everything else. So it is surprising. It is different. Uh, there are a couple other things I could kind of do. I mean, the one I... That's the shortest way to the answer, and that's the best way probably on a... Uh, on a... Uh, a mobile device, those you could just type in and do, the chart you could make. That's a good one to do. The only other one that I like to do sometimes is the following. I'll sometimes do this. I'm going to put in the lower bound. This will take a few minutes. I'm going to put in the mean, the high. I know that I just typed the mean twice. That's intentional. I'm heading for a special type of chart. It's a modified form of a candlestick chart. Uh, this one is going to be the mean minus the uh, minus the t inverse of 0 0.05 comma n minus 1. n is the count. I should have calculated that, but I didn't. So I'll just have to go do it the old-fashioned way. Minus 1 times the standard deviation divided by this. Just this is the uh, standard error. <laughs> The square root of the count of, I knew I should have calculated those sample sizes. Save me some typing. Close off all my parentheses. All right, no autofill. No, no, I don't want to autofill anything. So that's nitrogen. 
non-nitrogen. This is nitrogen fixing. The mean, well, that one I've got. That's this. And I can go across. This one has got to be the same number. Whatever. Lazy, I'll just pick it up from there. And this is the upper bound. If I type this right, I can go up here, select it. Now, I have to be very careful. I'm going to press Escape. I'm going to click in G12. But then I'm going to click at the top, at, all the way up here at the top near the FX, and paste it in there so that none of these num letters change. And then, I'm so lazy, I'm going to change the minus to a plus. There's the upper bound. And yeah, this looks like it's going to be messier. But let's try it. Uh, I probably just want these two columns, but let me see. One and out. Try. Column chart. No, I'm looking for... This This is a laptop only. Yeah, I know. Requires five columns. No. Switch rows. Ha! That's what I wanted. Now, I've got to add some labels to it. And this might not make sense what you're looking at. But what I've got is the non-nitrogen fixing trees are here. And the nitrogen fixing trees. And you can see that these, this is somewhat indeterminate. But basically what it's telling me is that the nitrogen fixing trees have a population mean between 31 and 126. And the non-nitrogen fixing trees have a population mean between negative 27 and 53. Neither one includes the other sample mean as a possibility. The problem comes is maybe the population mean is right here. Maybe. And so this is a this is a good way to go. It suggests there's some fuzziness, but you couldn't use this to prove that they're statistically significantly different because the possibility exists that maybe it's 50. The population mean is 50. And 50 is supported by both. We couldn't rule out 50. We can rule out that if 13 is right uh, and 78 is right, no, those two can't come from the same population. They're too far apart. But what if the population mean is somewhere in this area? That's a possibility. At that point, we'd go to the p-value. And so if we get this p-value less than alpha. Now we can reject the null hypothesis. We have a statistically significant difference. Yes, we should be planting nitrogen-fixing trees. Now, that's probably a little bit much, but the book talks about this approach, and it's a more advanced approach, but it's certainly one that can be can be explored and taken. So I look at something like this as, as a good start right here, the mean standard deviation, but the core to the statistics is figuring out whether they're statistically significantly different. The key thing to look at is in here at that p-value. That's the uh, our surprise factor. Now, with that p-value being significant, you can go after the effect size, but you're going to have to do the pool, the standard deviation to pull that off. So if you want to do that, you can, but you're going to have to get in there and do the pool, the standard deviation, which is going to be equal to the uh, square root of triple parentheses, and then, well, I'm going to need my sample sizes. So let me go ahead and I'm using, uh, I'm going to insert some cells, shift down. I'm using a control key on my keyboard. I'm using right click. Basically, it's a right click shortcut. I really want my sample size in here. And I want this range, because this is going to make this next calculation easier. E equals the uh, count of that 20. Oh, 20. Duh, 20. I could probably just use that. All right, equals the square root of 1, 2, 3. Ooh, 1, 2, 3. I know there's 3. And uh, n minus 1, that 1, minus 1, times the standard deviation squared plus the other one. And they're the same number. It's probably a simpler formula I could use if I worked my little brain just a little bit longer. Um, Close off the top of the numerator and divide by uh, this n plus n, uh, sorry, plus <laughs> this one. Uh, I think it's plus 2. Minus 2? Minus 2. Must be minus 2. Minus 2, yeah, minus 2. And then close the whole square root. 
94, right about halfway between the two. Uh, and again, if I need to, I can go look up a, a, a formula. I can go into here and uh, um, let's go ahead and make a quick grab of that just to check my formula. You know, I don't memorize every single formula myself. So it's sometimes good to go check for a formula. And so while that's looking for that, I'll come back here. And I'll work on the effect size. The effect size. Oops, sorry. Uh, down here. The effect size. It's going to be, it's just going to be the absolute value of the difference between the two. Means 78. I'll do it this way. It'll come out. doesn't matter the order. And I'm going to divide by the pulled standard deviation. And so it's about a 0.6926 effect size there. Uh, let's go look up some effect size information. Uh, pulled standard deviation, minus 2. I wanted to see this formula. I carry it around in my head, but I always try to remember if it's a, it's a minus 2. It's the same as the top. 0.69. And I've got to see this table anyway. It's right between medium and large. So it's a, it's a medium to uh, almost 0.7 medium medium large on that area in that area but basically a medium effect size here's a medium effect size so you could go there and do the effect size again this number should be it should be about halfway between because the two are equal the two sample sizes so it should be about halfway be between 87 and 101 it looks pretty good and our effect size a medium effect so the effect size medium just shy of large uh, that would be using 11.3 to to take a look at how big an effect the difference is. The reason it's not larger can be seen in back in this chart, the overlap. They are different, but they're not super separated vertically. They're still you know, just adjacent to each other. So we get a medium effect side out of this. So it's significant, medium effect. Uh, it does mean there's some benefit in planting your nitrogen fixing trees to soak up carbon as opposed to your non nitrogen fixing trees. I know that's a little long, but these analyses will take time. That's why they I allow a week to work on them. Wrestle with the numbers, pull meaning out of it. We're using stuff from chapter two. I would hope I see this sort of thing going on. The means being calculated, taking a look at it. I'd hope to see some kind of a chart. Uh, my chart has gotten messed up. <laughs> that that happened along the way. It picked up the standard deviation data, which it shouldn't. So I'd have to go in and fix it at this point. It's picked up some extra rows here. This should end at H3. Uh, and it should be G to H. G1, G... Oh, it picked up the sample size. So I messed up my chart. I'd have to start over again on my chart. I'd have to, on my computer here, I'd have to select these, and then I'd have to use the Windows key or the other some other key to split select. I'm using the Command key on my keyboard, but you might be using a Windows key or some other key. And once I've done that, I can go back and get back the chart that I started with, except row one is headers, and G is labels. Nope, obviously I've still got problems. Uh, I didn't quite get this right yet. Um, I got close to the... I got a problem. So basically I've messed up my chart and I'd have to go redo it from scratch. I'd have to go over here, copy, control shift paste to get that in, or command shift paste, whatever works. That that shift puts it down as numbers. I'm lazy. I, I'm being lazy when I want to fix my chart at this point and it's broken and I tell it no I don't want there we go now my chart is back again that's part of this week troubleshoot figure out how to make things work how to make things behave it's just part of learning to use a computer you sit down and you play with it and you work at it and you struggle um, I learned statistics in college but when I learned statistics, we just had pencil and paper and, and a, a little calculator. 
to run some numbers. I mean, we could do calculator calculations. Um, I was the first generation that had calculators, um, electronic calculators. But we didn't have spreadsheets when I was in my statistics class. And so everything you're seeing me do um, with the spreadsheet is something I've learned uh, on my way by playing. There, there was no book. Uh, uh, I learned the statistics uh, the old-fashioned way. And if you think this is hard, calculate all of these by hand. This standard deviation. Well, I could do a whole 45-minute video on getting the standard deviation of one of these. It's some long, nasty calculations. Uh, but now we have spreadsheets. Now our skill set is using it to analyze things. We can move to the next level. We can stop spending our time grind, grinding away through you know, these low-level calculations and go right to very high level. This was very complicated in the old days, looking stuff up in tables and things. Oh, you think this is hard. Ooh, we had it tough back then. But now we have spreadsheets. So learn to use it. Play with it. Uh, that's uh, something I've been able to do my whole life is play with things, get them to do what I want them to do. When you get stuck, they always have these help files. You can do them. And these days, there's even videos online. So, uh, but as I say, this, this would be the basic. Wouldn't be full credit because you haven't proven they're statistically significantly different. Not here. Full, full credit means going into here and then concluding that you have a statistically significantly different result that you're going to reject in all hypothesis. And yes, you should be planting nitrogen, fixing trees when possible, unless there are other overarching considerations. And uh, that wraps up 12.3.